This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 1, this is Section 2, The Experience Beyond Theology. Friend, I am touched by your concern for me and the intensity of your passion for the Course. Its message of salvation was clearly demonstrated in your most recent post. You stress repeatedly that we tend to perceive only what we want to perceive and that my perception represents what I want to see and not what is really there. I trust you will accept that this propensity to misperceive based on prejudice is not unique to me and that you might also share it. David, I love you as my very self. The joy of Christ is the intensity of the passion I express. I am aligned with the Holy Spirit's perspective and do not share the propensity to misperceive. I now see that illusion cannot be shared. Only the Holy Spirit's perspective can be shared. For the personal perspective of the ego, based on the premise of private minds and private thoughts, was the only error. Only love can be shared, and the attempt to share an illusion is literally impossible. I know of your desire for true freedom and therefore point out that your questioning must be aimed at what you believe freedom to be. It is what you believe it to be that is covering the experience over in awareness. It is of them who learned of freedom that you should ask what freedom is. Text chapter 20, section 4. Friend, with a little willingness the Holy Spirit corrects our perception and then what we project is the love of God, not the confusion of the ego? David. Actually, the Holy Spirit extends and the ego projects. Love extends and error projects. Projection is always of the ego. The difference between the ego's projection and the Holy Spirit's extension is very simple. The ego projects to exclude and therefore to deceive. The Holy Spirit extends by recognizing himself in every mind and thus perceives them as one. Nothing conflicts in this perception because what the Holy Spirit perceives is all the same. Wherever he looks, he sees himself and because he is united, he offers the whole kingdom always. Text chapter 6, section 2, para 12. Friend, I will tell you also that almost everything I thought was true about the world and God 40 years ago, I do not agree with today. My mind was changed about many things and it was changed mostly by people with whom I initially disagreed totally. I was a little willing to listen when I came across a persuasive case, whether I wanted to believe it or not. So it is not true that there is no amount of evidence that can change my mind. David, you are beginning to discover that everything that you think you think is completely meaningless. This is a reflection of the undoing lessons of the workbook, particularly Lessons 4 and Lesson 10. Friend, I will tell you one more thing. 
I spent three years in biblical studies at a church college. Some of my teachers were spiritual giants, and they taught me a great deal more than they knew they taught me. One thing they taught me was how to do theological and scriptural exegesis carefully and professionally. I love doing both with those who are capable of doing either, and that is not everyone, which is fine. David, the concept of theology has only temporary value as a stepping stone in the awakening experience. The text of the course is intended to make the workbook lessons more meaningful. Yet, it is application of the lessons without making exceptions that is the key to the transformation of consciousness or the happy dream. The goal is true forgiveness and theology must be laid aside for this experience to occur in awareness. Theology rests on belief. Because belief is not universal, argument and debate plays a central role in theology. That is why Jesus tells us in the clarification of terms that though a universal theology isn't possible, a universal experience is it is the experience that brings an end to all doubt. Friend, we do not talk theology, we just do it. Whether talking about it or doing it with others, I usually learn something, which is where the joy comes in. God knows I am not always right. One cannot learn if one thinks one is. It does say, after all, blessed are the peacemakers. There is nothing that says, blessed are the theologians of peace. David, talking about theology can be summed up in the following passages. The study of the ego is not the study of the mind. In fact, the ego enjoys studying itself and thoroughly approves the undertakings of students who would analyze it, thus approving its importance. Yet they but study form with meaningless content. Text chapter 14, section 10. All unhealed healers follow the ego's plan for forgiveness in one form or another. If they are theologians, they are likely to condemn themselves, teach condemnation, and advocate a fearful solution. Text chapter 9, section 5. Do not let the attachment to theology delay the application of the daily lessons. For all learning inspired by the Holy Spirit is aimed at the experience of awakening. The ego is the seeming block to the awareness of this experience, and therefore it is the ego that must be unlearned or undone to wake up to reality. Friend, while studying the New Testament, I also had time for a few psychology courses, including one in perceptual psychology. The bias of perception, so often stressed in the course, was pres presumably well known to the psychology professors, Helen Shuckman and Bill Thetford. They would also have known about a similar phenomenon called extension transference, whereby a pattern of thinking can be transferred from one arena to another, unconsciously, whether or not it is appropriate. An example that is related to the bias of perception is when we take a principle such as it is a good idea to stop at stop signs and apply it as an absolute, suggesting, for example, that in all cases, all laws should be strictly obeyed, including, for instance, the law that required one to 
rat on Jews in 1943 Germany. David, what you are calling a principle is a make-believe thought that is a part of a false self-concept that God did not create. Spirit transcends the belief in the physical. If you read the principles of miracles at the beginning of the course, you will see examples of what I call the miracle principle. The miracle principle does apply in all cases. And if you apply the workbook lessons without exception, you will experience this as true. There is no order of difficulty in miracles, precisely because the principle is equally applicable in all cases. This is the transfer of training at which the ACIM workbook aims and on which the experience of true forgiveness depends. Our spiritual being, represented by the Holy Spirit, is shared as one purpose or perspective. The Holy Spirit knows what is truly most helpful in all cases. The Holy Spirit is always present within to guide our thoughts, emotions and perceptions and to inspire the seeming actions of the body. Whether or not one listens to the Holy Spirit appears to be a choice. But remember, the Holy Spirit is always within, ever present, and always waiting to be heard. In any situation, if you quiet the thoughts, quiet the emotions, quiet the urges of your mind, and listen within to the Holy Spirit, you intuitively know the right thing to say or do. It follows that if you are a willing listener, you do not need a legislature or a philo philosopher or a psychologist or a church authority of any kind to tell you what is right-minded and what to say or do. If you are honest with yourself, you know the answer inside of you. The Holy Spirit is the guide that always leads to the peace of God. When the mind seemed to fall asleep and forget divine principle as being one with God, the Holy Spirit was given as the guiding light, whose purpose is forgiveness and awakening to oneness. But a sleeping mind does not always want to listen to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes a sleeping mind listens to the ego. This is a mistake, for the ego is not real and knows not reality. Thoughts, emotions, perceptions and actions of the body, which proceed from the ego, produce the illusion of enslavement of the mind. Does the Holy Spirit know that the sleeping mind is not going to always listen to the guidance offered? Of course, the Holy Spirit knows about the sleeping mind's fear of awakening. The Ten Commandments were given mostly as behavioral guidelines, intended to remind the mind about divine principle. I say mostly because there were a few commandments that are not behavioral, in that they apply directly to the altar of mind. To love the Lord thy God, to covet not, and to have no graven images or idols before God. But the other ones address behavior. The Holy Spirit was basically saying, since you often forget to listen to me within, I will let you know in advance that I, your memory of spirit, am never going to guide you to kill, commit adultery, 
steal or bear false witness against your neighbor, etc. You may call these laws, yet they are simply crude guidelines which help lead you home to heaven. Christ is the divine principle to which these laws point. The Christ is the spirit of God's love, and the only real law is divine love. This law cannot be broken, for it has no opposite. Yet this law can seem to be unremembered. This seeming amnesia is the time-space cosmos of a sleeping mind. The commandments or laws were inspired by the Holy Spirit as a stepping stone towards turning within and following the guidance of the Holy Spirit in all cases. When the eternal principle of Spirit, of God, of Christ was forgotten, ego laws were made or projected out of fear. Listen deep within. Do not listen to the ego's reasoning. Listen to the Holy Spirit. The laws made up by the ego are nothing and lead nowhere. Yet the Holy Spirit leads the sleeping mind to a gentle awakening. Examples from the Holy Spirit are given and used to show that there are no exceptions to the miracle. They teach, resist not evil, by proving there is nothing real to resist. The context or content of all the examples I share is the miracle principle. What you perceive as extension transference is but the attempt to deny that the miracle applies in all cases. Every conflict you perceive is a call for love. Peace comes to the mind which sees that conflict is impossible because attack is impossible. Only the ego believes that attack is real, yet without the concept of attack, there is only peace. The ego is not real, and there is only peace. Forgiveness is impersonal in a very literal way, for it transcends the belief in private minds, private thoughts, and separate persons. The detached perspective of the Holy Spirit reflects the biblical phrase, God is no respecter of persons. Book of Acts. Intrapersonal is another word for the self-concept. Yet the miracle shows that no self-concept can stand in the light of truth. The truth is, I am as God created me. The truth and the belief in attack do not coexist, for perfect love casts out fear. There is no order of difficulty in miracles and no hierarchy of illusions. The miracle simply sees the false as false.